consider one of the best uh, uh, museums outside Egypt for Egyptian uh, civilization. So I am thankful for having this opportunity. Um, the um, title of my talk, as you see in here, is uh, uh, intended to remark some aspects of the signal processing and the modeling of cardiovascular functioning in uh, order to also be able to produce uh, novel technologies uh, for uh, taking care of the people in uh, using also some uh, new ICT uh, tools that are actually available. And uh, the um, uh, I think there is a sub for you. Otherwise, I can work on the order of the computer. So, as it is well known, biomedical, biomedical signals um, carry information about the physiological system of the knee, and the processing of these signals are intended for three two aspects. The first one is the traditional one on uh, uh, by medical signal processes, that is to enhance information, quantitative information from the signal, which is correlated to the physiology uh, which uh, the signal that said the are expression of. And uh, number two is to qualify such information and uh, validate this information using a physiological model. And so there is a very uh, nice intersection between by medical signal processing and physiological model. Because generally, uh, experts in signal processing do not do modeling, and vice versa. Experts in modeling do not do signal processing. Instead, according to my opinion, in, especially in a biomedical application, it's very important that people uh, who have competences in signal processing should have competences in modeling and vice versa in order to fulfill uh, more advanced uh, knowledge in that area. And uh, in fact, the um, uh, this uh, scheme is a very, um, um, it's a sketch, it's simply a sketch of uh, how the uh, processing aspects reported in the upper part of the figure and the modeling aspects reported in the lower part of the figure, of the figure could interact. So we start from the biological process, uh, we obtain through some measurement that are corrected by noises and disturbances, we obtain the signal and noise, we process the signal noise in order to enhance the information contained in the signal and we obtain some processing parameters. The same way we can uh, think of a model uh, which could be able to represent uh, some characteristics of uh, the signal or the physiology that I uh, am interested in. And uh, so I may implement this model that I have in mind through a model structure, number one. So this is an implementation of this model. And uh, from this uh, model I can get some signals and uh, I process this signal, I obtain some model parameters and comparing between the modeling and the processing parameters I can really improve uh, the knowledge of uh, the goodness of this uh, model because if this model is not good I can start with another model, the structure 2 and another model, the structure 3 or even change the model, the original model of uh, what I think is the, the correct uh, functioning of the system. And an example of this is uh, uh, given by these two slides. This is uh, a uh, uh, model depicted by a physiologist, not by a medical engineer, uh, who is a hands curtain, he's an expert on uh, the uh, central nervous system and autonomic nervous system in connection in the, uh, in the humans and in uh, in physiological studies. I do not want to enter into details, but just to show you how complex is uh, the system of the regulation of uh, uh, autonomic functioning. And then uh, involving some central structures, involving uh, the vascular muscle, involving brain perfusion, involving arterial bar receptors, and so on. So we started from that physiological model, and uh, as engineers, we um, tried to single out which signals were involved in. Obviously, 
the signals in both in the preceding uh, block diagram were many, too many. But uh, we single out uh, in a quite simplified mode, considering simply respiration, heart rate, and arterial vibration. So having these three signals in mind and uh, uh, replicating uh, the model introduced by Koepke before, we were able to see that uh, with arterial blood pressure, with heart rate, with respiration, we could be able to uh, um, develop a, a black box model, and so a model from the standpoint of engineering scientists, and uh, in which it is possible to uh, see these are the signals, this is the respiration, this is the uh, heart rate variability, the heart period of uh, the successive after periods inside the ECG signal. These are the sequence, the series of systolic arterial pressure. So with respiration, heart rate, and blood pressure, we are able, through this model that was developed by us in, in the 80s, um, it is possible to obtain the uh, mechanical transfer function between heart rate and blood pressure, the parallel mechanism in a real closer to the way. Also this block in here is the so-called uh, a respiratory arrhythmia, and uh, many information can be detected from each of these blocks. And so that model was developed by, by engineers, but started from physiological consideration. So, and uh, obviously in here there is a lot of signal processing problem, a lot of identification aspects. I do not want to uh, come into details of that. Um, obviously the um, uh, information the, that we can detect comes from the regulating systems of the autonomic nervous system, which are, as you know very well, divided into two branches. The first one is the sympathetic uh, nervous system, and the other one is the parasympathetic nervous system, which in the case of the heart, basically the parasympathetic coincides with the vagus nerve. So that's why we call sympathetic and vagus uh, uh, system in for the uh, study of heart separatory system. And uh, the, um, uh, this uh, physiological picture indicates that uh, it is uh, really important uh, to consider which are the physiological causes of the variability of the changes that we are uh, studying and that we are uh, measuring with our current measures. And so that's why also the big popularity has gained in recent years not only the uh, original uh, cardiovascular signal like ECG here, like pressure, respiration, which is not a cardio cardiovascular signal itself, but uh, has a strong connection with the uh, cardiovascular function. But uh, also the so-called variability signals. So great interest has been dedicated not only to the morphology of the way of the ECG, but also on how the uh, uh, heart rate uh, does change in a dynamic sense on a bit-to-bit -bit basis because of these uh, changes are certainly correlated with the functioning, good or not, uh, good the functioning of the controlling systems. And this variability of the heart rate, of the heart period, uh, being one the inverse of the other, could uh, provide us many information that uh, cannot be visible on a naked eye from a physiologist or from a clinician, like in an ECG general cardiologists do. So we have introduced the so-called tachogram, RR series as a function of time or as a function of the number of beats, the same as systolic arterial pressure, the diastolic arterial pressure as a function of and uh, of, of the down of the beat. And uh, this approach has gained uh, also great popularity due to the fact that also in medicine, great interest has been given not only to the uh, uh, pathology of organs, but also to the pathology of the control systems. And these pathologies has now a name. And these uh, pathologies which affect the uh, control system are called dynamical disease. And uh, this dynamical disease uh, very important because also hypertension at a certain extent could be considered a dynamical disease. So it's a pathology uh, correlated to the imbalance of the sympathetic balance or could be due to other reasons which are correlated to the, to the controlling system. 
also diabetes is well known, this metabolic pathology, which has a lot of implication in autonomic control system. And uh, some early signs of uh, the generation of uh, 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 neuropathy diabetes could be found from the diabetes. And uh, even myocardial infarction, who certainly uh, has a main cause, uh, which is mechanical, I would say, or some artery inside the heart has a really very strong effect on the controlling system, generally on the over sympathetic response of the organ. And in this way, even myocardial infarction has some uh, aspect of dynamical disease. And due to this reason, the, uh, the fact that uh, the variability signal here we have three cases of atrial diabetes signal. One, one is a normal subject, the other one, the other two are pathological situation. And uh, you can see that uh, this case, for example, the lower is atrial fibrillation, is a random light signal, high variance, and uh, basically broad band of frequency. Not really white noise, but someone say that it is. Uh, Fibrillation signal in the variability signal is compared to, to white noise. This, the middle one is the congestive heart failure, so variability which is very small, small variance, not clearly evident peaks in the, the spectrum, the, the frequency. Basically, a very, very high, low, very, very, very low frequency component. And uh, this is the normal instead. This is the normal instead which appears uh, in irregular signal. But uh, this is a sign of health. This is a sign of uh, the functioning of the sympathetic and parasympathetic and dealing with the neural system, but also there are some mechanical effects. There are also some tumor effects uh, which controls cardiovascular magnitudes. And so given this uh, apparently erratic uh, trend, it's typical of the healthy situation while the pathological situation are very different. And uh, uh, so that's why heart rate variability has been so successful in the last year. If you go to Medline and you did the digit heart rate variability, you will find out that there are 12 or 15,000 papers cited in recent years which refer to heart rate variability. And uh, there are two major, probably the first major, Paper is a task force of the European Society, the North American Society of Pacing, uh, which is uh, the Bible of heart rate variability with all the uh, standards of measurement of interpretation of clinical use, etc. It was published in circulation in 1996. It is the third most cited paper on circulation, which is almost unbelievable for myself to understand this without it. Another very important uh, journal is the uh, circulation research of uh, 1986, which the basic fundamentals of many of uh, these uh, processes are mentioned. A key word of uh, my uh, lecture today is integration. In effect, we already, I have already mentioned that it is uh, important to get an integration between physiological models and signals data treatment because from the combination of these two competences one is uh, able to obtain more information that uh, with different competences into these two separate fields. But there is also integration of information from signal and images from different systems with different modalities with different scales the so-called multi-scale analysis and uh, all these elements are generally complementary. That is, uh, putting together, they could really obtain an enhancement of information. And obviously, the purpose of this is to improve the physiological knowledge of the system and to introduce uh, some uh, tools uh, for better clinical <coughs> procedures in diagnosis, therapy, and uh, rehabilitation. This is a nice picture, a nice movie, which represents how through a transesophageal 3D leads, it is possible now to come very close to the heart 
and to measure the ultrasound imaging of, let's say, in this case, is a, a mitral valve. Uh, you know that uh, mitral valve uh, is uh, not necessary when there is some uh, dysfunction. It's not necessary. It is needed to be replaced, completely replaced. It could be working on it. And uh, uh, because uh, sometimes uh, a, a partial repairment would be more successful than the total uh, repair, than the total substitution of mitral valve. And so in this way, you see that it is possible to obtain a very precise snapshot of the mitral valve using the different uh, leaflets, anterior ones and posterior ones, through a non-invasive or a minimally invasive procedures because the 3D uh, probe enters uh, to the mouth and go very close to the heart. And uh, through a, either an automatic or a manual recognition of the ring of the valve in a dynamic form, like in here, it is possible to build up a, um, a figure in which uh, the three-dimensional shape, in which it is also possible through ultrasound, the detection of uh, the uh, papillary muscle tips and the computation of distances and angles of these uh, the valves and the portion of valves which are maintained in their position to particular uh, muscles. And uh, sometimes uh, it is more uh, proper to repair this muscle or to change uh, some of these tips to uh, uh, restore basically a pseudo, a pseudo normal physiological condition. And uh, that can be obtained also through a finite element model that we developed in collaboration with our colleagues of the biomechanical uh, uh, area in our department, in the Polytechnic of Milan. And uh, so it is possible here to make a very, very good simulation of the morphological part of the valve and the leaflet and the mechanical part, the mechanical response. In, uh, in this way, it is possible to uh, have a map of strains and to see which are the portions of the, which are the portion of the, of the, of the valve which are uh, submitted to higher strains and uh, which have more probability to uh, be replaced in the future times. And so, for example, these are the uh, insertion of core of third order, the ones in which the strains are less, while the uh, core insertion of second order first order uh, are the ones which are characterized by higher value of strain. And so in this way, having this uh, snapshot, as I said, of the uh, mitral valve, the, the, the surgeon, the cardio surgeon, is uh, as all the reactive elements to decide whether to make a total substitution of the valve or to make a partial repairment of the valve with the main advantages that this second uh, intervention may have uh, uh, respect to the first one. And in fact, it is possible after a partial restoration of the valve, uh, this is the situation before surgery, this is the situation after surgery, in which it is possible to see that uh, the, uh, the physiological situation is almost uh, completely uh, recovered. And uh, also it is possible with uh, is the same paradigm to follow the dynamical changes of uh, mitral valve with the RT valve because uh, in many cases, as you know, the uh, surgical intervention would uh, imply the substitution of valve valves and uh, also the interaction between the two functionalities, even from the biomechanical point of view, is very important to be estimated or to be simulated in a reliable way. And I think that, that this method using the, uh, the um, photographic signal, which is uh, obviously non-invasive, uh, and uh, using this uh, mechanical model is extremely useful for giving this information. We are in the society of information, and, uh, and uh, behind this slogan, which, uh, which uh, could be saying something, but uh, also uh, not so much, um, <coughs> I want to remark that uh, through these, uh, let's say, clever or advanced methods of uh, 
integration of data processing uh, among images, among different systems, uh, among uh, different scales. I do not uh, produce you examples for time reasons of this multi uh, scale analysis, but there are many. And uh, I want to go on to the, uh, what it is possible to do for really improving the quality of life of uh, uh, the last generation. And uh, one keyword, uh, which was accepted by the uh, European Union, in fact, uh, many um, projects were funded by the European Union, either in the, uh, in the sixth framework program or in the seventh framework program, was in the area of the wearable system. And the wearable system is, uh, if we uh, put in these uh, scales, uh, the comfort and the daily activity in increasing order in this way, or the burden and the weight in increasing order in that sense. We have these, these, these are the normal devices, these are portable devices, these are wearable devices. And uh, obviously, the difference between wearable devices and the portable devices are well evident into this, uh, let's say, fancy uh, picture. And uh, obviously, it is uh, better to uh, condense uh, many sensors in a t-shirt like that or in, the, or, uh, in uh, different uh, uh, things that uh, can be worn in, uh, in a normal uh, life condition. And in fact, the, uh, the European project has introduced uh, e-textiles Textiles in which it is possible to insert directly the uh, sensors for uh, detecting uh, ECG, for detecting respiration, for detecting uh, the activity, for detecting many other signals. And uh, this, the application are in game monitoring, in telemedicine, the distant, uh, the distant uh, subject, uh, monitoring elderly people at home, for example, teleassistance, rehabilitation to help in the rehabilitation phase of subjects at all without uh, comparing them to go always to the rehabilitation center. And uh, ergonomics, uh, virtual augmented reality, sports, medicine, etc. So there are many areas of application in which uh, the textile electrodes, which uh, now are extremely diffused and uh, possess very nice uh, uh, electrical uh, properties uh, sufficient for a reliable, reliable recording of signals, like in this example, these are, for example, five ECG leads, and uh, three are pseudo-intoned leads, and two are pericordial leads. Obviously, these uh, uh, paths are indicated uh, just to show how they are put, but uh, in the normal T-shirt, uh, electronic T-shirt, uh, these uh, paths are hidden into the textiles, and the recording that are obtained are there, and, uh, the uh, recording are not so bad, and many work have been done in the comparison between the uh, signal recording with this wearable device, between the more traditional system of portable device, like for example, an old and the, uh, the recording was, uh, was quite good. We have also impedance-o-metric sensors, which measure the variation of impedance due to the beating heart, or also due to the respiration. So, that is another intelligent uh, aspect to discriminate between uh, these uh, two physiological functions. Or we can use uh, piezo-resistive electrodes for measuring uh, the uh, signal which is correlated to respiration. And uh, in here we have, for example, thoracic and abdominal respiration signals, which uh, does not provide uh, probably a complete quantitative uh, uh, measurement of this uh, activity, but uh, certainly the uh, some important indication about the, the respiration rate, which is uh, important in the cardiovascular correlation. And uh, also the electrode skin contact uh, has been improved in recent years. Uh, for example, the, the new ones are um, present electrodes with a filling layer to increase the pressure and the sternal layer to reduce the evaporation rate. And this was developed inside another uh, European project um, by, by, by a company in, uh, in, in Italy. Uh, they are experts in textiles. This was historically Italy, particularly a part of Italy, has experience in textiles and 
as you know, there is a big now uh, competition from, from Chinese, so they, they thought that it would be better to dedicate to the dancing application rather than to maintain the traditional market of the textile, traditional uh, textile business. So they entered vigorously into this uh, new aspect uh, connected to the ICT and to the monitoring aspects rather than to stay in the stable market of uh, textiles. And uh, these are, for example, My Heart is uh, a European uh, program in the Sixth Framework program and uh, in which uh, we have developed a part of this project I work not in the technological aspects but in the data processing, in the reduction of the complexity of the uh, big information that can be obtained in putting this uh, textile on a subject and uh, obtaining a very nice uh, wearable device uh, this is the electronics for the transmission and these are the softwares that uh, uh, are particularly friendly for the users and uh, the focus area are uh, sleep quality improvement through uh, a wearable device in order to avoid that the subject needs to go in every case to the polysonographic room in the hospital but uh, being able instead of having uh, some scores of the quality of sleep or the sleep disease at all in the normal environment of the subject without inducing any artifacts from the experiment. And in fact, for example, we have uh, developed in the project uh, some uh, t-shirt like that or some sensorized uh, sheet like in here or uh, mainly uh, sensorized uh, mattress like uh, this one which was developed by the VTT which is a company correlated to the University of Tampere in Finland and uh, they too participate to the project in this way it is possible to obtain a good, not an excellent, but a good signal of uh, ECG, of respiration and to be able to discriminate between movement correlated to the movement of the subject for example. In that case there is no direct connection of, uh, with electrodes or with the textile but simply the contact to the mattress or to the sheet in, uh, in the bed and so it is possible to monitor the, um, the complete uh, night uh, period and to enhance uh, some simple parameters obviously not all the parameters that can be used uh, with all the sensors that are generally used in polysonographic room but I do not know if you have seen the polysonographic room the subject is full of electrodes or sensors of uh, telecamera or whatever and uh, uh, in, this, in this case instead the uh, situation is less aggressive uh, against the subject he, he or she could sleep in his bed and uh, his, uh, the constraints are not so big and uh, it, uh, it is possible to obtain, for example, uh, through processing of the data which are on ECG, on respiration so we prefer not to use uh, the traditional EEG signal because it's complicated there is not yet a reliable, reliable wearable system for EEG signal and uh, so from the basis of the other signal it is possible uh, to discriminate the REM and non-REM sleep and uh, also the uh, portion of the, of the night in which uh, the subject was awake and uh, so uh, also a measurement of the sleep fragmentation index could be done in order to see if uh, the, uh, this uh, sleep fragmentation is concentrated more in the first third of the night or in the other third of the night, they have different implications from a clinical standpoint and what uh, we have suggested in the project uh, we could produce uh, at, uh, at the end of the, of the night uh, a score on the basis of these parameters before in which it is possible to say if one has slept with the normal fragmentation index or with the bad fragmentation index or a pathological that can be used for example on sleep apnea it is possible to count the apnoic episodes during the night and uh, to see if they are in the, in the first third of the night or in the other third of the night and providing some uh, quality at least. 
underneath there is a very, very complex list of algorithms of processing of the signals in which uh, it is really possible to uh, discriminate between wake and non-wake or in the, in the non-wake period, the REM and non-REM status and uh, from uh, this uh, point of view, this information can be put into a computer in which uh, the subject uh, could uh, update, or it is automatically updated after the end of the night, but could update also some elements of the, the caffeine consumption, of the stress parameters, the number of hours of sleep, of wake up, and uh, it is possible to develop a system that's not my job, <laughs> because I am a scientist, and so I, I, I stop in the step before, but uh, just to give an idea of how these uh, things could be applied, uh, that could be a, a, a prototype of uh, a system which is able to uh, uh, to be inserted into this, uh, what is called the heart cycle, is another name of a European project which uh, has uh, many interest in heart failure and in coronary artery disease and uh, this project is, is going to finish in, in the next year in which it is called the art cycle because it is important to consider not only the traditional interaction of patients with medical professions which are the general practitioner or the biologist or could be the specialist or could be the, the doctors in hospital in which there is an interaction between these two elements, but there is also the cycle of the patient. It is the patient himself or herself at home who uh, uh, monitor this activity, who insert it to the computer. Obviously, that's required at least an elementary alphabetization of uh, using of uh, Certainly, the young generation is growing up uh, without any problem in that. Certainly, the, maybe the older generation would be in trouble in interacting with the computer in some data or, uh, or, or, or this kind. But that would be useful because this uh, uh, circularity in, uh, of the patient on itself could be uh, really a feedback. The first feedback is the patient on his data and the second feedback is uh, the patient with the medical professions. And uh, more information can be uh, produced by this uh, first circle without uh, going to involve the, uh, the other circle, which involves uh, generally uh, more expenses, but uh, obviously it's mandatory to interact in a pathological case to involve the second circle. But at least in the first circle, much information could be uh, richer in a very easy, probably also in a very less contaminated aspect of, uh, of the experimental problem. And uh, there is another project, uh, which is going to be which is uh, called the psyche, is uh, concentrated to the bipolar disorder, uh, which are pathologies of uh, psychiatric origin. And in this way, the same uh, pattern of the two circles, the first circle, which is the patient who is, uh, let's say, taking care of himself or herself, that is, is uh, looking at his data, is uh, storing some of uh, his data or data. And then this uh, circle produces many documents, many information that can be used also by the other circle of professional care or paramedical personnel taking care of the subject at home, for example, patient exit. So that's it. I uh, wanted not to go over too much with the timetable. And uh, I just simply want to, to thank the collaborators in the lab, which is called the Biomedical Signal and Image Processing Lab inside the Department of Biomedical Engineering in, in the Polytechnic of Milan. These are all the people. We are now roughly 30. And obviously our motto is that none of us is as good as all of us, because it's very important, the team group that I am uh, proud to, to, uh, to be succeeded in. And there is a, a last uh, message that I want to, to show you, maybe for the younger students here present, that uh, even in, uh, in 
2011, together with Metin and Kai, uh, together with other um, people in the steering committee of the summer school, we are organizing in Siena, the Certosa di Montignano, uh, which is a beautiful old monastery opened by the University of Siena in the middle of Chianti. We are organizing for next uh, June, July, the one week of the summer school dedicated to advanced signal uh, processing. We applied uh, this year to the team of neuroengineering from gene to cell to central nervous system, putting an accent on the uh, interaction among scales and uh, among uh, different modalities and uh, dealing with uh, uh, dense algorithms and dense tools and uh, generally we expect uh, 35 or 40 students, uh, PhD students, uh, postdocs or young professors, generally in our experience was that, coming from all over the world. Certainly stay in touch, consult the IEEE uh, page and certainly you will find also other information. This is only the preliminary first time. Thank you for your attention.
So we, we hope that that would be a good direction, because there would be a reward for us, because uh, not all these problems are solved. There's so a lot of problems from the methodological point of view, from the processing aspects, from the technical, technological aspects, and still we need to solve. So there is a lot of work by the engineers. And for you, young people. Any other questions? And signals and so on, and the correlation with models lying underneath. Um, you had several models and so forth, and if you remember that slide, I, I wonder if, in fact, uh, you think that uh, many groups uh, or a sufficient number of groups have concentrated on the subject of uh, predator sensitivity to essentially analyze the models and their contribution to the kinds of measurements you get in heart rate variability. I would say that ordering of the parameters would be very important with regard to the dynamic sensitivity, and that would show up in correlation. Sure, sure. Yeah, well, uh, probably you, you mean uh, uh, Traditional measurement of barrel reflex sensitivity, let's say, that one, one parameter would be, uh, be one parameter would be that, hmm? the sensitivity of the barrel centers. And uh, so, generally, this measurement is done clinically inducing perinephrine, so inducing a drug which changes the steady state of the patient. So it's a measure which is a kind of a provocative measure. It's a clear response of the subject to this uh, provocative test. In this way, instead, uh, we use the closest, we may calculate these parameters in the closest loop way without perturbing the system. So the, the patient does not need any induction of drugs to uh, measure his or her barometer sensitivity. And we work a lot on that. Because in, uh, in that sense, uh, with the closest loop of the barrel reflex, it's not simply you know, the response of the traditional blood pressure of the heart rate, but uh, not in, in a tech loop, <laughs> but it, it inserted it into some loops that cannot be cut and not be eliminated. In this way, I do not perturb the subject. I uh, record the respiration the blood pressure through non invasive way, a thin address and the ECG, and in this way I can calculate uh, in more of a reliable, let's say, sense of this matter. We published many papers in the 90s about this, this stuff. Other things, uh, along your uh, suggestion, is uh, maybe to calculate respiratory sinus arrhythmia. This one is the respiratory sinus arrhythmia in the model, rather than simply to calculate the power set and the variability taking the HF component, which is correlated to respiration. In this way, you calculate it into this model sketch, which is, uh, I would say, more prone to the physiological condition. Other questions? Where do you see the, the direction of our role as scientists and engineering researchers going? Uh, is it along the way of coming up with more sophisticated algorithms? Is it instead of mathematical or in some other direction? Yes, it's, um, it's a difficult question. Being uh, myself uh, uh, an expert on signal, biomedical signal processing, I would say that uh, obviously there is the need uh, to go along uh, the improvement of these uh, tools of uh, information enhancement. Now it is very normal to see that uh, all the parameters, like the one that John mentioned, like about the representativity, 
is not a static measure, it's a dynamic measure. So you should take these parameters on a bit to at least on a bit to bit basis. So to see if the variable the sensitivity of Sinus arrhythmias is a changing portion, is changing in the dynamic way or not. So, time variant system, time variant means uh, short time to rate of swallow, means uh, weighted uh, transformation, uh, it means empirical uh, model composition, and uh, all of these methods were developed in the last, let's say, uh, 20 or 30 years as application in our field. Also, the nonlinear aspects were strongly considered, especially not only the Yapnov exponent or the correlation dimension, speaking with people who are expert in these things, which require a long uh, data recording, but uh, especially angular uh, or you know, kind of fluctuation analysis, which uh, provides you the fact that uh, some signals are scaling. Uh, Independent, so at some fractal uh, properties and also some complexity correlated to the fractal dimension. These are tools that uh, came into the biomedical arena uh, 10 years ago. Uh, even other areas of science were interested by this uh, insertion of uh, nonlinear parameters, chaotic parameters. And uh, I think uh, we did a great progress is in that in the last years, and I would say that probably new things would appear in, 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 in all these directions. So, one is certainly the improvement of the methods, of new methods maybe that are tested in other part of science, maybe in radar analysis or in laser technique to be used in my medical field. Many chaos uh, applications derive from laser, from physicists. Well, 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 well. So probably in the future, new meters will appear and uh, we will enter into this, uh, our business in some time. Secondly, also the technological development uh, is important. I will see that in the nanoscale aspect, really important, it's an interesting uh, area, even if, uh, you know, Many people sometimes who say they are working in the nanoscale work in the micro scale, but anyway, that's a different thing. But the really, the, the real nanoscale approach with materials, with, uh, with uh, biomechanics, biomechanics in the nanoscale is completely different from biomechanics in the upper scale. So it requires a new uh, culture from our student or young investigator to study this new approach. So there will be in, into the area of the multi-scale analysis, which uh, is very, very recent. I would say that in the next decades, a lot of uh, more research will be done. So I, I would say methodological aspects, because I work in this area, and I would expect that there will be some contribution even in the, in, in the area in which I work. But certainly in the technological aspects, in the multi-scale aspect, I would I think that we can have many problems now. Since uh, the 10 years that uh, I have uh, asked to uh, collaborate with my group to dedicate to the uh, meters applied to the uh, processing and the level of the genome and the protein. So she works uh, using regular decomposition, Bayesian uh, meters, part uh, of chains, uh, and even gamma filtering, even. Uh, uh, Digital filtering, trivial digital filtering, not on the sample signals, but on the sequence of the genes or on the amino acids which forms uh, the protein. And so I think important results could come from this approach. It is uh, our approach of engineer uh, applied to different signals, which are not simply the sample signal of ECG or respiration or whatever. But our similar, really, we are, we are in the nanoscale.